welcome to worship here at the Lutheran Church of the Good Shepherd in Red Deer. Perhaps some of you may be worshiping and watching uh, this uh, YouTube service other than here in Red Deer, whether you are in La Ronge, Saskatchewan, or Coeur d'Alene, or wherever you are. It's good to know that others are clicking on and uh, catching our worship services. Uh, we will be continuing with our worship services on YouTube for some time to come, um, just the way things are evolving here uh, with the continuation of the, the COVID virus. Uh, friendly reminder, since this is uh, the third Sunday in Pentecost season, uh, if you want to get yourself some bread and wine in order to participate in the virtual communion later, uh, please get yourself prepared so that you can do that later on in the service. Uh, in our gospel reading, Jesus calls the disciples and sends them forth as laborers into the harvest. Reminds us that in our baptism, we too have been commissioned and called to share God's compassionate love with, with all the world. We continue then with the confession and forgiveness. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live to serve you in the midst of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus. Our sins are forgiven. So let us live now in hope. For hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
God, may we sense your presence as we pause to listen. Pour your love into our hearts so we may treasure and share these blessings with others. Make us aware of the times we see your presence in the stuff of everyday living and happenings. Sometimes we have doubts and questions. Sometimes we are able to be the compassionate people you intend us to be. We know that you do not forget us because you have our names carved into the palm of your hand and we are grateful for your love. Amen. Hey kids, today is our very special Thanksgiving edition of Kids Church. We're going to talk about being thankful. Get ready! I just love Thanksgiving. The turkey, the stuffing, the pumpkin pie, my crazy Aunt Betty pulling out her kazoo in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> you probably already know about the history of Thanksgiving in this great free country of ours. But today, we're gonna go even further back. We're gonna learn about what God said about being thankful in the Bible. Psalm 100 verse 4. This is our memory verse. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Did you know that that was an ancient song? The Israelites used to sing it to God. They didn't have pilgrims or thanksgiving, but they still gave thanks because of their God. And here's the message in that song. God does not want us to be grumpy. We should always be thankful. You do know that you have a lot to be thankful for, right? Family, parents, friends at school, even annoying little pestering brothers. Here's a little tip for you kids out there. 
You can't be thankful if you only focus on yourself. Believe it or not, the less selfish you are, the more thankful you'll be. Because it's not all about you. That's the other message in that song. Thankfulness is an attitude that comes from knowing that God is good. It's just who he is. God is always good. Even when you're having a bad day, remember that. Hmm. Maybe that's why the Israelites put it in a song. I think songs help people to be thankful. And that should remind us. When we're at church, we should sing with thankfulness. Whether it's Thanksgiving or not. We'll read Psalm 100 together. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. The second reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we, are also, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners, Christ died for us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For this day is found in Matthew chapter 9 beginning with verse 35. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, 
and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Care for the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you receive without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Christ. People of God, grace and peace and mercy to you from Jesus, our Savior and friend. Amen. I am sending you. That's your word from Jesus today. From now until November. The Gospel readings move chronologically through Matthew. So this season now is called the ordinary time. Now ordinary doesn't mean uh, typical, rather it comes from the word ordinal, which means a series. So ordinary time is a six month walk through the teachings and the work of Jesus with Matthew as our guide. <clears throat> So you always figure out that I have some good news and some bad news. So first, the good news. Jesus refuses to carry out his mission in the world by himself. So he calls us very ordinary, imperfect people to work with him. So as people who believe, it means Jesus calls us into his mission. And there are a couple of promises that go with that. Remember the one that says, go, baptize, and teach. And remember, I am with you always to the ends of the earth. And then there's another one that reminds us that the Spirit of God, which is alive in us, will help us with the words we need to say. So what's the bad news? Well, it's a hard and demanding word from Jesus today. Because Jesus calls us and asks us to surrender absolutely everything to help make God credible in a world that seems to be convulsing in pain. A few verses following in the chapter that I was reading, Jesus' words suggest that there will be times when our faith will require us to go against the cultural norms, we will feel like we're fighting uphill battles, and we'll have to speak truth to power. And we've seen in the last few weeks how important it's going to be to speak truth to power. And Jesus said, this is the scary part. Take no money, not even a backpack, don't even take shoes. Just go, I'm sending you out into the midst of wolves. So hang in with this reading and let's dig in and find what the challenging work is for us today. Jesus has been on the move, healing and preaching and teaching great crowds. And he's finding them depressed and harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. And he feels compassion for them. So we might well expect Jesus, who is this caring shepherd, to take care of them. But nope. That's exactly what Jesus does not do. Instead, he commissions the disciples to step into his shepherding shoes. Now, these disciples were not a particularly impressive bunch. For some reason, Matthew wanted to name them all an unlikely crew of uneducated, unreliable disciples carrying on Jesus' mission. Really? Nevertheless, Jesus looks at these disciples and empowers them with the same power that he has authority over unclean spirits and healing every disease and sickness. And just after Jesus gives them this authority, notice that their name changed. They had been called disciples, now they're called apostles. After Jesus gave them that task and the authority. A disciple is a learner. An apostle means to be sent. Now, because you've heard enough sermons from me, you know I am going to remind you that you have also been called by Jesus. Yes, you have. Amazing and intimidating at the same time, isn't it? At least it is for me. Because to be sent by Jesus into a world of hurting people, some of whom might be wolves, is to be sent as Jesus. 
And if we throw up our hands at this call saying, really, Jesus? I think God smiles and God gets it. This is one of the most challenging things about Jesus. He picks ordinary people to be part of his mission. It's easy to admire Jesus, thinking of him as a great teacher. But then comes the problem with Jesus, and the problem is us. It's easy to believe in Jesus, but we have difficulty that Jesus believes in us. It's hot in here, so my glasses are falling down on my nose, sorry. It's easy to believe in Jesus, but we have to believe that Jesus also believes in us. Perhaps like me, you wondered about this instruction from Jesus. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, enter no town of the Samaritans, just go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So I wondered, what sense does this make, Jesus? Didn't you come for everyone? What about those stargazers who came from the east visiting you in the night of your birth, Jesus? They weren't Jews. Well, of the four gospel writers, Matthew is the one who always emphasized Jesus' Jewish identity and that Jesus believed his mission was to begin with the house of Israel. I think it's kind of interesting that Jesus warns his disciples not about the outsiders, but the insiders. The wolves, you see, aren't the Gentiles or the Samaritans or the immigrants, or the illegals, or the homeless. You know who they are? They're the synagogue leaders, pastors. They're council elders, church councils, magistrates and politicians, judges and politicians, who will threaten the mission of the disciples. Israel's problems are with Israel. Or in Pogo's words, we have met the enemy and he is us. Commentary suggests that Jesus knew exactly what he was doing. He knew if he and his followers started taking their message to the Gentile world, no self-respecting Jew would pay any attention to them because that would only confirm that Jesus was in league with the devil. Jesus knew what he was doing. Now we know that later Jesus undergoes a transformation, eventually telling his disciples that God's salvation is for everyone. Remember last week's text was about Jesus saying, go and make disciples of all nations, and remember I'm with you always, all nations. So Jesus had made some kind of transformation, but not yet in Matthew 9. Remember that Gentile woman who came and fell at the feet of Jesus and said, come and please help me, my daughter is sick, can you come and heal her? And Jesus said, No, my ministry, my mission is just to the house of Israel. In fact, the first time she talked, he didn't even listen, he didn't even answer her. She kept on, she kept on. But Jesus. So finally she says, But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And I think that was a turning point for Jesus. He started to realize that his ministry wasn't just to the house of Israel. So what does all this have to do with us in 2020? We see one of God's signature moves where the most unlikely persons, the disciples with all their foibles, are chosen to do great work. Are you hearing God calling you yet? Why does God so often operate this way, I wondered? Well, it gets our attention for sure. But I think the deeper purpose is to train our eyes and train our hearts, strengthening our ability to hope against hope and our ability to act in times of adversity. Then precisely when we feel the most harassed and helpless, God calls us to take up the shepherd's mantle ourselves, to play our part, to step into God's ongoing mission of healing and renewal. The story of salvation we are called to speak is a story of wider and wider circles of inclusion. First Jesus' followers, then the lost sheep of the house of Israel, 
and ultimately everybody else, remember, all nations. It's a story of love transcending the divisions that we construct among ethnic, religious, and racial lines. And this transcending love resonates powerfully with the protests for racial equality today in Alberta, in Canada, in the US, and around the world. In the face of a pandemic, or racism, or climate change, or a broken relationship, or any number of other challenges. Change can seem elusive and impossible. But the good news is that at times when love or justice seem impossible, then the Spirit is already at work calling the church to join her. People of God, we are that church. And we're called into God's mission to love and care for all may take some time, plenty of hope, but God will transform our disbelief into joy. If you claim the Christian faith, and I think you all do here, then you are called in our communities to name hope that is undergirded with justice. Hope undergirded with justice. Which means not just to glance in the general direction of uh, injustice when you see it and to walk away thinking well I hope somebody does something about that no it means to rather to identify yourself with those who are aching and dying in the case of long-standing racial crisis in Canada and the US against people of color Aboriginal folk homeless GLBT communities etc and the movement now to change police training to be called by God means to move beyond denial, beyond that band-aid approach of thoughts and prayers, and move to action. Action. We follow Jesus, remember? Also a brown-skinned man who died a violent death at the hands of brutal law enforcement 2,000 years ago. And we are called to no longer tolerate the demon of racism in our countries. The names of George Floyd and Chief Adams from Athabasca, Chippewine, need to be named and remembered as we speak out against all forms of racist inequality and brutality. So I encourage you to think of a time when you felt God's call on your life. Maybe in a healing service when a pastor placed hands on your head and prayed for healing for you. Maybe you felt a tingling sensation in your body and you knew God was present. Maybe through a piece of music, you knew God's presence. Maybe that was a time when you heard God say, I am sending you. Well, I was called for several years to consider seminary. I resisted following the path of other medical training, all good professions. However, you can run, but you can't hide. At least not from God. So I heard that voice finally as I sat in a church service, totally oblivious to what else was being said. And yes, I know it happens to you too. That voice was my call to study to be a pastor. Rita, I heard that voice. I want you to go to seminary. Nothing else. And, oh, the excuses. Good Lord, I'm 49 years old. Why now? I just completed a rigorous training three years ago as a psych nurse. I'm tired of books and I'm tired of studying. That voice once more. Rita, I want you to go to seminary. I was called and I knew I had to listen that time. And I'm glad I did. My parting wish for you, dear people of Good Shepherd, is that you know without a doubt that you are loved by a gracious God, a gracious God. And you have been called into God's mission, whether you like it or not. And I wish we pastors, I wish Daryl and I could place our hands on all your heads and give you all God's blessing. I guess it'll have to be a virtual blessing and hug. That's not what we wanted to do. You are here 
because you've been put here on a mission. The word mission means to be sent. You're not here because you were searching for some deeper meaning in your life and you just happened to stumble on Jesus. No. Nope. You're not here because you did a study of all the world's religions and you decided that Christianity made the most sense. No. Nope. You are here because you got a call. And the voice at the other end said, guess where you're going. I need your help. Thank you, God. So I have to say, are you listening? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you that you've called these people, Good Shepherd, to be your people. Thank you for the call to all of us to be your people. Thank you that you have promised to never leave us. But thank you that you always challenge us and say, come on, get going. I need some action, not just talk. Give us the grace and the courage that we need to face whatever we need to face in our own personal lives or as a community of churches of, of this church. Give us deeper faith, increase our faith, and help us in our unbelief. Amen. Together, confess our Christian faith, the faith into which we were baptized and called, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us continue with the prayers. Gracious God, we pray for the life-giving action of your Holy Spirit 
in our lives. We know what is good and right, and yet we struggle with doing it for ourselves and for the people we love the most. Open us more fully to the good news that Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be our Savior, can also bring about wholeness in our lives. May we find ourselves doing better as well as knowing better, that we may praise you and bring honor to your name. Hear us, O God. God of all grace, we acknowledge that many of us carry an inner critic which continually tells us that we are unworthy of the name Christian, or that we lack the gifts to be your servants, or that we have the ability to fulfill our calling. Remind us again, O God, that the person God knows, loves, and calls is the person whom, you, whom we actually are, not some idealized version of ourselves. Hear us, O God. God of love, give us peace and rest for our souls, so that refreshed in you, we are freed for discipleship and service. We know that we are called upon to bear certain bur burdens for the faith and to do things that may challenge us. When the burden is heavy, let us find strength in the easy yoke of your love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the universe, you have created this world in which we live and have called it good. Yet at times the forces of nature seem out of control. We pray for all those who have been affected by the flooding in Lac La Biche or the tropical storms in Central America. Help us to put our trust in your love and care. Motivate and equip those who are reaching out with hands and hearts to serve those in need. In our faithful prayers and generous response, Help us to be a church in mission for others. Hear us, O God. Amen. Holy One, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Empower all whose voices go unheard. And give us the courage to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. Hear us, O God. We pray that you will give rest to all who are weary or heavily burdened, those who are facing significant health issues, facing dealing with cancer or other significant health issues, especially those whom we care about and now name in our hearts. May they know your presence and peace. Hear us, O God. Yes. Holy One, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to de develop and encourage the gifts within this congregation that we may rise to the challenge of being the church in this difficult times. May we not lose heart and tire of doing well but give us a passion to reach out with the good news of the gospel. Hear us, O God. Your mercy. We pray for Susan, our national bishop, our synodical bishop, Larry Kokendorfer, and assistant, Prima Samuel, and all synod staff. We pray for our interim pastors, Daryl and Rita, and incoming pastor, John Lentz. We also pray for all out outdoor ministries of our synod, especially Camp Kyriakos. Grant them the resources to face the challenges of providing ministry in this time. Hear us, O God. Receive these prayers, O God, as well as our prayers too deep to put into words, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
At this point in the worship service, we would normally receive an offering, and it's very difficult to do that uh, by video, but uh, we simply remind you that uh, we appreciate very much the generosity of those of you who continue to support uh, the Ministry of Good Shepherd and uh, the larger church uh, which we are part of. Uh, our treasurer tells us that financial support has been very encouraging. We thank you for that. And uh, we want to also mention that the uh, congregation has now set up e-transfer. So if you want to use that as a way of donating, uh, that's available to you. Um, and if you don't want to know more about how to use that, uh, there will be a, a note at the end of the service during the credits. Or failing that, call the church office. Darlene knows all and will help you through that. So thank you for that. Now we'll hear some special music. shepherd as yet we are not able to worship together in this building but because we are the body of Christ we are together wherever we find ourselves and we believe that Jesus is present in the bread and in the fruit of the vine with us here and with you in your homes so we then continue with the great Thanksgiving the Lord be with you and also with you lift up your hearts we give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good. We should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Christ our Lord, whose glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in singing this hymn of praise. Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Our tables are prepared, and Jesus welcomes us as we share together. This is the body of Christ the bread of life for you. And this is the blood of Christ, the cup of healing for you. So we welcome you to participate in Holy Communion at this time. Dear friends, you are the body of Christ. Go now, fed and forgiven, to be God's good news for the world. Go in peace. We sing now the post-communion canticle. God's benediction. May the grace of God given us in Christ Jesus flow over and through you. May the love of God live in and around you. May the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you. May we go forth as God's beloved and blessed creation, God's image of love and grace. Amen. Amen. Now, there are some announcements, I understand. I'm pleased to announce that the council decided that we could have a farewell gathering for our beloved pastors. We're going to gather on the front lawn on Sunday, June the 28th. This is plan A. Come to our church for a farewell gathering of Rosties on the lawn in front of Good Shepherd at 10.30 a.m. We will spread out our families by six meters, keeping to the Alberta Health Services requirements. Bring lawn chairs for your family and coffee or tea thermoses for yourself. There will be no food available or shared. Please wear masks where possible. Now, this is Alberta. If there is incumbent weather, lots of wind or rain, then we will have a drive-by 
with an opportunity to speak to our pastors in your car, from your car. Please note that there is video services planned for the next couple of Sundays, and there will be a video service recorded on Thursdays, which is when we record our services for June the 28th. This is a, this, uh, what's happening on Sunday is for the pastors to celebrate them and for you just to have that opportunity to love on them. Bring your cards, bring your, your um, just your presence is really what they want. That's, that's their biggest present. So hopefully we'll see you on June, Sunday, June 28th at 10.30. recording this is lovely anyway a party sounds good to me outside on the grass but anyway we haven't concluded this service yet sorry God um, you know when we when the kids were here when we were all together we loved it when the kids would come and gather with us around the baptismal font and say go in peace, peace and serve, serve the Lord, Lord. thanks be to God. God we miss you kids we miss everybody, but that was a really f good part of our worship service, and thank you for all of you who came running from all corners of the church to, to stand, and, and you did such a great job. You learned so fast what you're supposed to say, so good for you, and I hope you teach Pastor John that that's what you do, and uh, just do it. <laughs> so I guess we're going to walk to the back, or is this our goodbye? <laughs> I don't have any new shoes, so... <laughs>